if we bear Christ's name, then our first Mm -hmm. calling is to share the gospel with the sphere of influence that that God gives to us. And we all have a sphere of influence, right? Whether that... And, and the seasons of sphere of influence change. Sometimes it's just your family. Sometimes it's a ministry. Sometimes it's your workplace. Um, so matter where that is, God all gives us a sphere and, and a calling to share with people what he is doing, what he has done for us and what he is doing in our lives. Well, I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you, this is a wow interview. This interview touched me very, very deeply. It's a conversation that I had with Jason and Haley Bellotti. They're an ordinary couple. They live in Atlanta, Georgia. He has worked for Chick-fil-A for years and years and years. They've raised their children to serve the Lord and they've said yes. They have said yes to a very challenging and interesting call on their lives. You know, they always wanted to do something for the unshakable kingdom of God. They were always all in. But as they began to have children and the corporate world was taking more and more of Jason's time, they didn't see a way to answer the call of their hearts, specifically missions, to serve God on the foreign mission field. But then God made a way where there seemed to be no way. And now their hearts are all in. They've written a new book titled Sink or Sit. How's that for a title? You are going to be undone by my conversation with Haley and Jason Bellotti. And hey, I I just want to tell you one thing. Do not listen to this episode unless you're willing to get out of the boat. I'm Carol McLeod, your host on the Significant Women podcast. This podcast is where we tell stories of people, apparently men and women now, who are just like you and I, who have answered the call to follow Jesus. Well, I am here today uh, with two new friends we've actually never met before, with Jason and Haley Bellotti. Is that how you say your last name? Did I do yes, it well? Yes. And and Jason, that's got to be Italian. It, it absolutely <laughs> is. Good catch. Yeah. So what is your favorite kind of Italian food? Probably anything pasta related, red sauce, lasagna, spaghetti. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you go for the basics. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing fancy. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we're going to talk about your new book today. We're going to talk about your family, about your calling in life. But before we do that, I want to hear about your love story, Haley. How did you meet this guy? Mm-hmm. Why did you fall in love with him? And why did you marry him? <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually met at Chick-fil-A. Um, we oh, both my. started at Chick-fil-A when we were 15. Jason is three years older than I am. So we went to different high schools, um, different churches. So we would have never met had it not been for Chick-fil-A. And they're actually... Um, how many couples, babe, ended up coming There was at out? least six or seven out of that restaurant. Yeah. The, of couples that actually met at Chick-fil-A. Um, and so, yeah. So, like I mentioned, Jason is three years older than I am. So, when we first met, uh, we were just friends solely. He actually had a girlfriend, and I wasn't really dating anyone at the time. And then as the years progressed, I was dating someone, and he was still dating the same girl. And But we... Um, I often hung out as friends with our coworkers after we had worked together. And so I developed some relationships with some of Jason's closest friends while he was away at college. So once he came back and kind of realized that I had formed closer relationships with them, he started paying a little bit of attention to me. And so we started hanging out together in groups and just uh, developed a friendship and then it kind of manifested itself um, from there. But yeah, so that's actually how we met. And then we started dating. um, And then after a period of time, got engaged. So yeah, but the Lord brought us together through Chick-fil-A. So we're very, very grateful. It'd be 30 years in March. I was going to ask you how many years. So all my, all my single friends who are listening, they're all going to go start hanging out at Chick-fil-A, which is a good thing, right, Jason? Well, well, they got to work there, Carol. They can't just hang out. (laughs) 
Oh, I'm a big Chick-fil-A fan. My, I have a three-year-old granddaughter. We go there at least once a week and she calls it Chick-fil-A. Can we go oh. to Chick-fil-A, Marmy? Chick-fil-A? <laughs> yes, we can. Okay. So were you both raised in Christian homes? Did you know the Lord before you were married? Yes, I did, Carol. Um, I was blessed to actually be brought up in church and also my parents sacrificed and sent me to Christian school. So I had Christian education uh, for the majority of my life, all the way up until 10th grade. So yes, very grounded in my faith and in my love for the Lord. I accepted Christ when I was 13 years old um, after a revival at our church. So yes, very thankful. What about you, Jason? Yeah, not the same for me. Uh, what I tell people is uh, mom and dad raised us up in a Christian home, even though we weren't, uh, I would say, uh, professing Christians at the time. They All the morals and everything they taught were we're right in bounds with what you would expect in a Christian household. And, um, but dad was Catholic, mom was Methodist. And, uh, when they got married, that was a no, no. And so, yeah. uh, they, they could not decide where to take us to church growing up. And so, uh, we would go to the Catholic mass on holidays only. And, um, but as I got into college, into Chick-fil-A and, uh, went to a Christian college to play soccer and then ended up at Barry college here in Rome, Georgia at the end. And, just was God put me around some great friends and people and through Chick-fil-A and Barry, uh, I accepted Christ in college and uh, it's been an amazing experience ever since. The Lord uses all kinds of things to draw us to himself, mm -hmm. doesn't he? It's Absolutely. a beautiful story. Now, Jason, I know that leadership is important to you um, mm -hmm. and that you yes. take seriously the call to lead the young men and young women under your watch. Um, I have a saying, leaders lead. And so mm -hmm. when I'm at a crossroad, I tell myself, Carol, leaders lead. Mm -hmm. and, and that's not always easy. But Jason, what do you think it takes to make a strong leader? What are some of the characteristics, the adjectives that you would say, oh, I want to see that in a leader? Sure. Yeah, the first two that, that I actually teach and, and teach into the leaders at Chick-fil-A when I'm mentoring them is one is strong work ethic. It's really hard mm -hmm. to... Uh, teach that once I get them at, at an age beyond college and, and such. So strong work ethic is huge because then you're leading by example and others mm -hmm. want to follow that. Mm -hmm. um, and then second is, are you able to build relationships? Um, you know, you get to the top and if nobody likes you, you're not going to anybody to lead. And so we talk about those two being two strong attributes. I would also say disciplined, loyalty, um, some of the other ones that you would commonly here. But for me, if you know how to build relationships over time and how to work hard, those are going to get you the most uh, respect and people are going to be more willing to follow you. And then you can really learn how to lead individually and how to treat people and, uh, and go from there. Yeah. I love that. Um, my dad was raised on a farm and mm. he was raised during the depression. And so let me tell you, Jason, in our family, we had a strong work ethic. Mm -hmm. It was very important to my dad and, and my sister, my brother, and I would, would all agree with that. Um, yeah. It's the first thing I noticed about Haley, to be honest with you. is Really? That, yeah. I mean, we met at work, but she was uh -huh. just one of those really strong, solid workers and, and was willing to come in when others called out. And, uh -huh. you know, I was just like, wow, this girl's got a motor about her and not, not afraid to do anything. Uh, work related, whether it was dishes or floors and uh, was really uh, something that drew me to her right away. But you thought she was cute too, didn't you, Jason? Well, of, of course. Yeah. In, the, in, in that Chick-fil-A uniform and, and rubber gloves, washing dishes kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. And smelling like chicken. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with your hair all pulled back. And, That's right. <laughs> oh, well, the two of you have combined your minds, your talents, your hearts, not only to build a great family and a great business, but now you've written a book together mm -hmm. titled Sink or Sit, mm -hmm. One Couple's Journey of Answering God's Call to Step Out of the Boat. What a great title. Mm -hmm. So first of all, let's talk about sink or sit. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I appreciate you asking. It really comes uh, from when Peter, when Peter was called out of the boat. And, uh, you know, we say that Peter's the only one besides the son of God to walk on water. And so I think the rest of the disciples were probably pretty wow. jealous yeah. and, uh, at the time and envious of, of his choice to say yes and answer that call. 
And yeah, he did start to sink a little bit uh, yeah. when he started losing a little bit of faith. Of course, God rescued him right away there. But, you know, our desire is for people to take that chance when God's yeah. calling them to do something by saying yes wow. and take a chance to to step out of the boat and to trust God. And you might get to walk on water like Peter did. Oh, I'll take it. I'll do it. And I'll try to keep my eyes on Jesus, right? No That's doubt. Right. Yeah, yeah. So um, one of the words, Haley, in, hidden in the title, in the subtitle, Sinker Set, One Couple's Journey of Answering God's Call mm -hmm. to Step Out of the Boat. Haley, how do you hear God's voice? How does God talk to you? How do you hear the call? Yes. Well, first of all, I believe that we are all called, right? Called and purpose to me go hand in hand. And so I believe as children of God, he has designed all of us with a specific purpose, which is why he gives us the breath in our lungs every day that we wake up. And so for me personally, when I say called, I believe that we are all called, uh, first of all, to share the gospel, right? Like right, if we right. bear Christ's name, then our first mm -hmm. calling is to share the gospel with the sphere of influence that, that God gives to us. And we right. all have a sphere of influence, right? Yes. Whether that in, in the seasons of sphere of influence change, sometimes it's just your family. Sometimes it's a ministry. Sometimes it's your workplace. Um so no matter where that is, God all gives us a sphere and, and a calling to share with people what he is doing, what he has done for us and what he is doing in our lives. And so I think God speaks to us in many different ways. For me, I believe in uh, confirmations. Uh, I don't want to do things out of selfish ambition, but always truly what the Lord has for me. And so mm -hmm. when I feel as though the Lord is kind of nudging me to do something, I will pray, Lord, would you just confirm or affirm for me that this is truly your voice that I'm hearing and not just yeah. a selfish desire? Mm -hmm. And the Lord is gracious in that. So I may go to church and the pastor may be preaching on Psalm 72. And then later on that week, I'm digging into my Bible study and Psalm 72 comes up. Right. And it's those kind of repetitive behaviors that come from Scripture or that are scriptural based. And those are kind of the signs and nudges in which the way the Lord kind of speaks and calls and draws me into what he's asking of me. Yeah, I, I can really say amen to that because that's the way the Lord speaks to me the most often is through the word of God, repetitive. Mm -hmm. I always mm -hmm. say to myself, Carol, repetition is your friend. Mm -hmm. And so when I hear it, uh -huh. what, what about you, Jason? How does the Lord speak to you? How do you know that God's called you to do something? Yeah, I think uh, for me, anytime you're walking closely with the Lord, whether it's starting in the mornings with devotion and in scripture reading that. I like to call them whispers. And again, mm. they're, they're similar to what you guys are talking about, but it's these moments. Uh, it could be on a billboard. It could be on the back of somebody's car. It could be with somebody, something somebody says to you. Uh, but you can hear the Lord's sweet voice. And, and when we were in Niger doing ministry work for all these years, it, it would be still, and we would be so focused on his work there without distractions that it seemed as if you could hear him even more. And we would hear story after story of people saying that. And, um, you know, what I love about my favorite Bible verse is Matthew 28, 19. And, uh, and he says, go and make disciples of all nations. And so the good news for your listeners is we've all been called to go mm -hmm. make disciples. Mm -hmm. And for those yeah. who say, Hey, I'm waiting and I haven't been called yet. No, actually Matthew 28, 19 calls all believers yes. to go ahead and do that. And you may not, feel called to leave the United States and that's fine. It may be in your workplace or in your neighborhood. Uh, but as a believer, we have already, good news is we've already been called. Now, what are we going to do yes. with it? Right, right. Yeah. You know, Jason, I remember when I was a young mom, we have five kids. They're pretty spread out. Hmm. But the only thing I ever did was go to church and go to the playground, to the park. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so every day when I went to the park, I'd pray for the Lord to give me a divine appointment, mm -hmm. that there would be a, a mom there who needed encouragement or laughter or hope or the gospel mm -hmm. and the playground, the park mm -hmm. became my mission field yes. and I loved it. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. And of course, mm -hmm. seasons change, but Jason, I loved what you said. We're all called. So start where you are, right. um, start w right where you are, mm -hmm. For um, sure. yeah, whether it's the grocery store or Chick-fil-A, start where you are mm -hmm. telling yes. the story of Jesus. That's now, right. 
you guys have, have um, built a great business. You're very committed to missions, but I, I want to pause for a minute and talk about your family. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, because you have also creatively created a family, designed mm -hmm. a family. So, so tell us about your adoption journey. Tell us about your kids. Maybe Haley, you want to go first? Sure. Yeah. So we have three young adult children now. Rashid uh -huh. is our adopted son from Niger, Africa. He's now 25 years old. Our oldest biological son is named Hunter. He's 24 years old. Wow. And our baby, Paulina, is 21 years old. Okay. And so our adoption journey started um, when Rashid was about seven, mm -hmm. seven or eight years old. And Rashid was in an orphanage over in Niger that when we would go over um, on teens, we would always visit Rashid's orphanage. And Jason was able to go on the mission first to Niger. And so he went and played with the kids at these orphanage. At this orphanage, there were about 72 to 75 kids in this orphanage. And when Jason came back, he was telling me all about his experiences. And at that time, uh, they had an opportunity where you could just sponsor a child. And that would mean yeah. that you would just send over a certain amount of money and you would cover everything they needed for the year. So Jason reached out. He came home, talked to me about it and said, hey, what do you think about us as sponsoring a child um, that's about Hunter's age so they can be pen pals? So that was uh -huh. the first initial thought behind uh -huh. it. And uh -huh. so I was like, of course, sure. So we reached out to the organization that we traveled over to Niger with and said, hey, could you pay, you know, here's some money. Would you mind pairing us up with a gentleman that's about Hunter's age? And so they actually got, but through them, they actually aligned us with Rashid. And so then we had the opportunity to go over and then meet Rashid one on one. And at first we would just take him pictures of the kids and take him a little gift. And we just built a relationship that way. And then after three years of sponsoring Rashid, the Lord called us to start the adoption process. He spoke to Jason first. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Um, I tell everyone that the Lord knew that he needed to speak to Jason first, because if the Lord spoke to me first and I was trying to convey that to Jason, I don't think Jason would have been as excited about it. But because the Lord spoke to him so clearly, um, the, I was completely on board. So do you want to tell yeah, I mean, Carol, we had our, our yeah. son and our daughter and we had two great businesses and we had a great life and we're yeah. both born and raised in Atlanta. All of our families in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I'm very buttoned up and black and white and, and planful. And we were like, Hey, we're, we're good. Yeah. And so God knew he had to shake me and uh, started waking me up in, at night and show me Rashid's face and saying, get him out. And oh. it was just that clear, that succinct. We, wow. we tell people we were not called to a, just adoption. We were called to adopt Rashid. And so we uh -huh. stepped into that. It was a three year journey, a lot uh -huh. of no's. We still have scabs and sores on our knees mm -hmm. from prayer. And so many friends came alongside us to do that. Uh -huh. uh, but we eventually, finally, and that's, really cool chapter in the book, but we got, we got permission to come get him. And he joined our family when he was 14 years old, barely knew any English, mm -hmm. uh -huh. uh, ended up at Whitfield Academy, which is where our kids went, a Christian K through 12 school here. Mm -hmm. uh, and then went on to play soccer in college and just graduated last May. He's now 25 and has a degree and it's just an amazing story. Wow. Very blessed. Yeah. And so then for our other two children, Hunter is married. He actually got married in October of okay. last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is actually on the road traveling with Chick-fil-A. He wants to follow uh -huh. in his dad's footsteps. So uh -huh. he's kind of earning his stripes right now. Uh -huh. And then our daughter, Paulina, is graduating from Colorado Christian University in May uh -huh. of this year. And she wants to be a missionary. So she's a global studies major. So yes. we're very proud of all of them. So the, the two younger kids certainly have really taken up the legacy call that you all have had. What about mm -hmm. Rashid? Um, Jason, what do you think Rashid will do with his life? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. Uh, he is, um, he majored in art and he's really okay. good. Mm -hmm. He's really oh, good, but, uh, but he's not passionate about it. And uh -huh. so we're trying to help him figure out what's next. And uh -huh. um, he is, he loves to be around other people. He has such a great mm -hmm. spirit. Um, so just trying to help him figure that out. He just recently got a job uh, within Chick-fil-A at their supply uh, warehouse. So he'll uh -huh. be staying within the Chick-fil-A family for now and deciding uh -huh. if that's something he wants to continue with. But yeah. um, 
you know, soccer was his passion, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, they're not right. going to make a career out of that. Right. There's very few that do. So. Right. Right. I totally mm -hmm. understand that. Um, so what was, what were some of the challenges of an international mm -hmm. adoption, especially for your two children, your two bios? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I would say that because the Lord, our process took so long in getting Rashid here, it developed several things within our biological children. First of all, it taught them a lot of patience. Uh, they had to learn that God is working even in the delays, right? And so they grew in that area and then also in their prayer life. Um, they truly had come alongside mm -hmm. Jason and I in support and believing that God had called our family to adopt Rashid. And so every time we got a no or a delay, we all just came together and prayed as a family and they would take that and share it with their you know, friends at school. And they had friends uh, at school. We had so many people praying for us. And so I think it just really grew us together as a family, but then also their prayer life with the Lord and their own relationship with, with growing and, and knowing him more. Yeah. Yeah. One time I talked to a mom, um, Haley, who had adopted several children out of the foster system she and her mm -hmm. husband had. And mm -hmm. she said, people would say to us, oh, aren't you afraid of how that's going to impact your family? And she, mm -hmm. sh her response was, I'm afraid how it's going to impact our family if I don't do it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. And I thought that was so powerful and so wise. Yes. And I've, those words have lingered with me. Well, we'll get back to Jason and Haley's story in just a minute. But I want to take some time to talk to you about missions from Carol McLeod Ministries. First of all, let me share with you a quote by one of my favorite preachers. Never heard him preach, but I've read nearly everything he's written. Charles Spurgeon. He was lived in the 19th century. And this is what Reverend Spurgeon said. It is the whole business of the whole church to preach the whole gospel to the whole world. I think that Jason and Haley Bilotti would say amen to that, don't you? I certainly do. That's the call of my heart. That's the call on my life. And I can tell you this, every time you make a purchase from Carol McLeod Ministries, or every time you make a donation to Carol McLeod Ministries, you're saying yes to the call. Yes to the call of missions. Your purchases and your donations enable us to take Bible studies into women's prisons all across America. We have 2,500 copies of our Bible studies in prisons in Texas, New York, Tennessee, and North Carolina. By the end of 2024, we are hoping to be in 10 states across this great nation of ours. Listen, whenever you make a purchase or make a donation, you're allowing me to minister to the precious people in Pakistan, one of the most bullied countries in the entire world. You see, once a month, I go to a remote village in Pakistan on Zoom, and I tell the people there the story of Jesus the old, old story that never grows old. And then we pray together and they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Hell gets smaller and heaven gets bigger. And we pray for miracles and miracles break out in their midst. I couldn't do it without you. I'm a missionary and so are you. I have said yes to the call. I would love it if you would join me in saying yes. All you've got to do is buy a book or make a donation. Welcome to the family. Now let's get back to my conversation with Jason and Haley Bilotti. The, the two of you have a very unique calling on your life that you have said yes to. And in just a minute, we're going to talk about yes. But right now, I, I want to go back to calling. Um, mm -hmm. Have you always been in unity about your calling? Have you mm -hmm. always felt called to the exact same country, the exact same mission, the exact same thing at the exact same time. <laughs> Jason. De de definitely not. Haley will share with you that she, <laughs> she was felt called to missions way earlier than I would have ever thought, but really? then I was the one that got invited first, but you didn't mm -hmm. tell that. So. 
Yeah. So as I mentioned, Carol, I grew up in the church and um, our church, we had a revival every year and that re revival would include missionaries coming. Sometimes they were domestic um, missionaries and sometimes they were international missionaries. But I was always, uh, my heart was just always so drawn during that time to the missionaries and their love and obedience to the Lord through what they were doing on the mission field. And so my heart always aspired to go, especially on a missions trip somewhere. And I really wanted to do international versus domestic, but our church really didn't have domestic, uh, excuse me, international missions trips that they provided or partnered with. And so after Jason and I got married, we went to a church for several years and then they actually started promoting international missions. And so I remember leaning over to Jason and saying, oh, I think I would like to go on one of these missions trips. And Jason had a bit of hesitancy. So he kind of shut that down. And my heart was a little disappointed, Carol. And I thought, Lord, am I ever going to make it on a missions trip? And so Jason, uh, the Lord blessed us with a second store. And Jason was actually on a business trip, of all things, through Chick-fil-A. And there he met a gentleman uh, that had been on missions trips to Niger, Africa, that actually invited Jason to go. And so when Jason came home from this business trip saying, hey, babe, guess what? I've been invited to go on this missions trip to Africa. I was not a happy camper, Carol. I mean, I was like, Lord, what are you doing? Like, I've always had this desire and now he's going to get to go first. And, but the Lord knows what he's doing, right, Carol? And yeah, his timing yeah. is always yeah. perfect. Yeah. And so Jason went and he was changed. He yeah. came back and he was changed immediately. And he was like, hey, guys, stop wasting the water. These kids over here in Africa, they don't have water to drink. And, you know, so there were immediate changes. And, yeah. of course, he was trying to describe what he had experienced and right. seen. And he was like, babe, you just have to go. And I was like, well, honey, you don't have to twist my arm. I would right. love to go. So, uh -huh. um, yeah, so that's a little bit about that. But do you want to share about your yeah. And, and I think um, if we jump ahead, when COVID hit, we were not able yeah. to go back to Niger. And and I had been 19 times. She had been 17 mm -hmm. times mm -hmm. and uh, she had a team planned. And of all things, the missionaries that we had worked with in the past had left Niger and were restationed or assigned to Alaska, of all places. Uh, and so I reached out to them, and said, hey, could you host a team? Uh, Haley's really uh, has a team ready to go and they can't go to Niger. And so they went to Alaska. And so over the last two and a half years, along with another couple, Haley and I have started a nonprofit to focus on Alaska. But, but when the first time I went to Alaska with Haley mm -hmm. on to, on a kind of a mission finding, uh, we were, she was not on board and, uh, the Lord had to speak to her, uh, and I was, I love Alaska and had been many times before hunting and fishing and, uh, but the native women uh, that she ended up meeting were the ones that God used to speak to her. And um, she ended up by the end of that one trip could turn to me and said, I'm all in. And so we've now led five teams there and uh, are focused on bringing the gospel to Alaska. And one last thing I want to say, because I don't want people to miss that you, you don't have to do international missions or even missions. And we talked about this a little bit earlier where you can spread the gospel. But I had an operator call me this morning and said, he said, I used one of your quotes uh, from the past. And he said, you told me your number one recruiting tool uh, for Chick-fil-A has always been prayer. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I just, I think wherever we are, uh, whether I'm on the mission field, Niger or Alaska, uh, or just training up these leaders at Chick-fil-A, we can make a difference by sharing the gospel and sharing what Jesus has done for us and who he is and, and how important he is. Mm -hmm. But now that COVID's over, you're still going back to Niger. Is that right? We have not. No. Oh, okay. We, we went. We, we went in twenty one. Uh, kind of at the end of this COVID was ending there a little bit, yeah. but uh -huh. um, some things have changed over there. They've recently been through a coup. Right. And, That's um, what I was wondered. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have not, and we and honestly, we feel like God has one hundred percent redirected us to Alaska to to use the things we learned in Niger, and we were with another organization there, but now we've started our own nonprofit. So the, we end the book with saying from sand to snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, what, what a great testimony from sand to snow. I was born and raised in Buffalo, New York. So all oh. I know is snow. Yeah. Yes. All I know is snow. Um, yes. You know, 
I'm one of those people that every year I ask the Lord to give me a word for the year. I'm a writer. I'm a communicator. Mm -hmm. I just like words. Mm -hmm. And a, a couple years ago, the word the Lord gave me was the word yes. That, mm -hmm. that was my word for the year, yes. Mm -hmm. And so everything the Lord asked me to do, I said, yes, yes, Lord, I'll do that. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord, I'll serve my mother-in-law. Yes, Lord, I'll. Um, and at the end of the year, as I was praying for my next word, I felt like the Lord said to me, Carol, I'll give you another word. But your lifetime word will be yes. Wow. That, that's your word for your life. So you two have said yes to a very um, significant degree. Mm -hmm. um, is it hard for you to say yes to the Lord? For, for me, I, I think I heard the quote from a, a pastor years ago that you never know what lies in the balance of that yes. Mm -hmm. And then if you follow the journey of me saying it was over a steak at a grill on a Chick-fil-A operator retreat, and he invited me to Niger. And we ended up going 19 times, Haley 17 times. We adopted Rashid. Our kids have been three times. We led over a hundred Chick-fil-A employees and or staff or operators to Niger. We ended up uh, partnering with 17 different schools raised money to build classrooms to affect 8,000 students. None of that's a pat on the back. It was a yes for God. And then he used us to do that. He used us to be able to make a difference for him. And so, um, you know, what, what a awesome thing we've gotten to witness by saying yes in that one area. But Carol, I would say, yes, yeah, sometimes it's hard. Hmm. Uh -huh. Because um, if you would have told me I was going around telling all of our friends once Paulina, our baby, was in college, that I was going to be over in Niger for months at the time. And I joked that Jason was going to come visit me in Niger um, <laughs> when in between running the businesses. And, you know, then like Jason mentioned, COVID hit. And um, after serving for so long in one place, you develop relationships and you love those people deeply. And so when the Lord removed me from Niger, it was I mean, I was devastated. I was broken hearted for a yeah. long period of time. But God, when we go back, Carol, to what you were asking me in the beginning of this, of how God speaks to me. God made it very clear. I was doing a devotional and I, it literally the title of it was help from the Lord. And it was a different devotional. But anyway, the gentleman that was guiding this devotional, one of the things that um, he said was allow God to take you to new places and give you new opportunities to develop new relationships. And that is there that you will encounter the guidance of God. Mm. And the word guidance was always important to me. It was actually a word that we used when we used to lead our teams over to Niger. And I have this whole article written about it. And if you truly break down the word guidance, you see the phrase, God, you and I dance. And it's talking about oh, wow. how when we dance, when two people dance, one person has to lead and one person has to follow. Yeah. And yeah. so with this journey that we're all on with the Lord, it's a dance, right? Our relationship with God is a dance. He's leading and we're following his leading, his guiding, his nudging. And so the Lord made it very clear to me through those words that we were to go to new lands and develop new relationships and he would give us new opportunities. And so for us, was that hard? Absolutely, Carol. Yeah. It was hard, but God made it clear. And when we say yes, so sometimes it's easier to say yes to God. And then other times I think it takes more surrender. But I think no matter what, when we say yes, when God has made things clear, then he rewards our obedience. Mm -hmm. So Haley, did you leave the children when they were young? How did you handle that as a mom? Mm -hmm. Yes, actually, that's a part of our story that we talk about in the book. Yes, we did. And so because Niger was a fourth world country, 94% uh, Muslim, uh, and Paulina was only about four years old when we started traveling to Niger, when I started traveling mm -hmm. to Niger, Jason and I made the decision to travel separately. And so we would both go throughout the year 
but that was the initial intent. Just in case something happened to one of us while we were over on the field, our children would at least have the other parent. And that was honestly our mindset and decision and and why we chose to go separately initially. But then through that process, the Lord both called us to start leading teams and mine was all women's teams. Uh, And so then Jason started or continued leading uh, guys teams predominantly, and sometimes their wives would join them on that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, the year that the Lord gave me the word yes as my word, and now I, it's my lifetime word. Mm -hmm. Um, I was writing a Bible study, Haley, on the life Mm -hmm. of Joseph of the Old Testament, my Mm -hmm. favorite Old Testament character. And do you remember the scene where it's, it's in Genesis um, 36, I believe I, uh, I should have looked it up before we talked, um, but it's it's the chapter in scripture where we discover that Joseph is his dad's favorite. He gets that gorgeous coat. He mm-hmm. dreams. His brothers make fun of him. Mm-hmm. All those things happen to him. And then his his dad says to him, "Hey, Joey, I need you to go check on the boys. They they're, yeah. they're taking care of my flocks." And Joseph's response to his dad is, "Hineni," which means, "Here I am. I'm all in, Dad." I'll go wherever you want me to go. And as I was praying over our interview today, I heard the Lord speak that word over you. It's a Hebrew word, hineni, that that you have said, Father, here I am. I'm all in. Wherever you've called me, I will go. And of course, others said it in the Bible. But um, thank you for your faithfulness. Th- mm-hmm. Thank you for serving and hearing God's voice. So before I let you go, I, I always ask these two questions. And Jason, you have to answer them too even though you're my fifth man. Um, The name of the podcast is Significant Women. So each of you share who have been the significant women in your life, who have been the women who have deeply impacted you. Hmm. Do you want to go to one? Um, I would say for me, uh, I did BSF for nine years and I was in leadership for eight of those nine years. And my teaching leader, Linda Olmstead, was an amazing mentor and just uh, taught us so well. And being in leadership with her, you got more one-on-one time with her and we developed close relationships with her. So I feel like my walk with the Lord really grew so much from just listening to her teaching and then modeling um, and, and developing a friendship with her. But then I also would say I have three very dear friends that I actually met through Bible study fellowship. And those are just really other believers that just love Jesus so much and have just iron sharpening iron uh, as believers. And as we do life together. So I'm very grateful for all of those friends. And then the Lord gave me one of my best friends through uh, the first time I ever went to Niger. Her, her name is Debbie Bennett and she's a little bit older, or I should say ahead of me in life. And so she is, (laughs) become a mentor to me and just one of the most godly women I know. And so she has definitely impacted my life and, and faith um, in the Lord. Yeah. So, yeah. What about you, Jason? Well, for me, uh, for sure, my mother, and uh, she just uh, was just a, she was a stay at home mom. Dad worked at Delta airlines and Mm -hmm. she was there every day. We came home from, from school with a snack and made sure we were ready every morning and, uh, always attended every one of our, my brother, we have, it's just he and I, he's two years younger than me. And she attended every event and every sporting event. Uh, but the other one is I think about women that I've watched and been impacted by would be uh, Truett Cathy's wife, Jeanette, mm-hmm. uh, got to see Truett, uh, who's the founder of Chick-fil-A over the years. And um, she just stood by her man and and was the backbone of that family as he was a successful businessman um, the stories we've heard, the impact she had on that family, uh, and, and just for the Lord, the way she lived, uh, is, is incredible. And mm-hmm. so her, uh, daughter, uh, Trudy mm-hmm. just wrote a book about her last year. And, um, so to read some of that has been very impactful on, uh, getting to see how a woman, uh, can really come alongside her husband even though he's, he's, he's successful outside of the home. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'll have to get that book. Thank you for telling me about it. Okay. Well, I love the word. I am a Bible girl through and through. So before we go, would you each share with me your lifetime scripture or a Bible verse that has just revolutionized your life? Mm -hmm. Jason, why don't you go first? Yeah. I mentioned earlier, my favorite Bible verse, Matthew 20, 19, but I will tell you that I love 
uh, Philippians 4.13 and yeah. just gives you that strength. I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengthens me. So um, thankful for that verse. And many times when you feel like you don't know what to do next, you can turn back to that one for sure. Amen. Amen. And for me, mine is Joshua 1, nine. Have I not commanded you? Do not be afraid. Do not be terrified for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And that is actually uh, how we came up with the name Why Go Ministries, wherever you go ministries. Oh. And that's just so encouraging, Carol, right? Like just the um, peace that comes with knowing no matter there's no place on this earth. That scripture and psalm that talks about even if I go into the depths of Sheol or if I'm on the mountaintop or no matter where I am, that the Lord's eye is on me. Right. And so mm -hmm. Joshua 1, 9, don't be afraid, be strong and courageous for I am with you wherever you go. It's just that piece of assurance that he's always with me. He's always going to protect me. Yeah. So. Oh, mm -hmm. thank you. What great verses to end our conversation with. But um, Jason, would you pray before we go? Absolutely. Thank you. Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for who you are mm -hmm. and that we can just reach out to you and, and share uh, what we're thinking, what we're, what our desires are, what we're thankful for, what we're grateful for. And we're thankful for Carol and, mm -hmm. and her time today, Lord, and just the message that she's spreading to other women. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I ask that as people listen today, that, that they hear what you've done uh, through us. We're just, uh, we're just here to be conduits for you, mm -hmm. uh, to spread the gospel Lord and for mm -hmm. others to hear about you and to have everlasting life. And so God, we know that you're uh, an almighty Lord and savior, and we're thankful for that. And we just want others to know that and to feel your glory and to feel uh, your love for them. So God, we ask that you come alongside anybody that's listening today, help them to, uh, to feel drawn to you to draw closer mm -hmm. to you based on carol's messages and the things that the interviews that she does with others god we ask that you bless us keep us safe and then we pray amen. amen well the name of the book is sink or sit and the authors are haley and jason Bellotti. thank you so much for joining us today mm -hmm. bless you guys stay in touch thank, thank you. you thank you so much for having us i warned you that was a great interview wasn't it have you said yes? Well, if you've enjoyed today's episode, I just want to humbly ask you to leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher, Google Play, or YouTube. Just tell people what this podcast means to you. It means more to us than I can even communicate if you would take the time to leave a review. Thank you so much. And I also want you to connect with Jason and Haley. Their website is Sink or Sit. Dot org. You got it? Sinkorsit.org. And listen, I hope you will order their book, Sink or Sit, One Couple's Journey of Answering God's Call to Step Out of the Boat. Are you brave enough to get out of the boat? I am. I'm brave enough. This book might change your life. Well, as we close today, I want you to think about what God is calling you to say yes to. Make no mistake about it. We are all called. We are all called to answer the call of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You are a missionary. Are you acting like it? You are an evangelist. Are you doing it? Um, he has a mission for each one of us. Let me read to you from Acts chapter 1, verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Our power comes from the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do it on your own. But when you ask the Holy Spirit, he will give you the power to answer the call to go where God has called you to go. It might be to the park or it might be to Niger. I don't know where he's calling you, but the first step is saying yes and then asking the Holy Spirit for his call. You are so significant. You have no idea how significant you are to the plan of God at this moment in history. God has his eye on you. He's got plans for your life that cannot be ignored. I hope that today with Jason and Haley and with me, you will say a significant Yes.